speaking Sunday night at State House, President William Ruto painted a picture of Kenya's economic journey, addressing key points that unfold like chapters in a story. He talked about debt, distress, and stability, crediting it to some tough decisions he made. He stressed that while things are stable, a hefty chunk of our money goes into repaying debts. Debts he claims he didn't accumulate. For every seven, for every, every 10 shillings I collect, every 10 shillings, seven shillings go to paying debt. Are you telling me that you want me to do what other countries have done to default on debt? Because that's the only option I have. I, I can say, okay, let us pay less, and then let's tell the international community, Kenya cannot service debt. Is that what you want us to do? But according to the common monanchi, we can still feel the heat of the high cost of living. Then he went on and on about this tale of managing inflation, throwing around big numbers like 400 billion Kenya shillings spent to support the Kenyan shilling. It's like he's navigating this economic maze, steering clear of inflation pitfalls. Fell prices were next on the agenda. Ruto made it clear that the government isn't the puppet master pulling the strings on fuel costs. He justified our tax rates, comparing it to South Africa, Morocco and Tunisia. Taxes, he says, are at 15.6 of GDP, a number he seems proud of. But should he be? Ruto's statement is in contrast to what we all know about fuel prices and taxes. On the 14th day of every month, Kenya's Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, conducts a review of the fuel prices in the country. As a result, the authority either announces changes in fuel prices or maintains the existing prices at the pump, a review that serves for a month. Amidst all this economic talk, he brought in the housing program claiming it's putting 120,000 people to work. It's like a subplot addressing the pocket struggles by creating jobs. There is already a framework. Only the, the court said we fine-tune the framework. That money is already constructing houses under the framework with the Ministry of uh, Housing. That. Some of it is being used by, we've already allocated to National Housing Corporation. And the construction of houses is going full steam across Kenya. We have, by the way, yeah. we, have 40, we have 33 sites, active sites, going on. I want to ask you to go to Mukuru. We are building 14,000 houses in Mukuru. If you go today to Mukuru, you will not think it is a slum. And then there's this promise of connecting us to jobs abroad. A ball move, if you ask me. But do you really think that this is the solution we've all been waiting for? We have very many unemployed youth out there. How many of them can we ship abroad? Now, President William Ruto also clarifies that this government does not plan to sell the iconic Kenyatta International Convention Center, KICC. We said we want to privatize KICC. Let me explain to the people of Kenya. KICC is an iconic building. Mm -hmm. It is the center of the city. Mm. All of us, including myself, when I came first to Nairobi, I came to that photograph place where we are holding KICC at the top. <laughs> and that will continue. People will continue taking photographs at KICC. But that's not why KICC was not built. That's why KICC, that was not why KICC was built. It was not uh, built for photographs. It was built as a, as a national asset. Mm -hmm. Let me tell the people of Kenya. KICC today is valued at 30 billion. Right? How much money do we get from KICC? Last year we got 29 million. The other year we got, I think, 40 million. How much? 40 million. What, what a waste. You know? The strategy is to commercialize KICC rather than treating it solely as a photography destination. Ruto attributed the lack of returns on investments to mismanagement and emphasized the need for a more strategic approach to the building's operation. Ruto also dived into the intricacies of foreign exchange. He claimed that dealing with a global saga, like the COVID-19 was in Europe, all are affecting our exchange rate. He's on a quest to get more foreign exchange, signing labor agreements left, right, and center. It's like he's building alliances for the economic battle ahead. And as the interview unfolded, it felt like Ruto was narrating a story of economic resilience, making tough decisions, and weaving a plot that involved not just Kenya, but the global stage, whether it's managing debts, battling inflation monsters, or creating job sagas. According to me, President Ruto seems to 
to be scripting a narrative of economic survival and growth, but he is doing it while ignoring statistics and the situation as it is. The interview which will have provided a platform for Kenyans to air their grievances didn't go as anticipated. And here is what are sections of Kenyans on X had to say. Robert Alice said, so to Ruto, we should collect 5 million shillings rent from 15 million Kenya shillings houses. Does Ruto understand what a normal asset is? His explanation of KICC is the shallowest that even a village elder can't buy. The government critic had this to say. President William Ruto only listens to himself. You saw how he was dismissing every statistics, data, or report about the situation on the ground or his government. What plans does he have? The plans of sinking the nation and enriching himself? Kawangore Finest, another Kenyan on X, also posted this on X, and I quote, This one President Ruto scored these journalists on their game. Simple question. Did the President Ruto invite them? It is a very sad day for professional journalism. It seems they rely on every opinion fronted on Twitter. Jumaji, another Kenyan on X, also commented on the same, saying, President William Ruto looked at the smiling journalist in the eyes a few minutes ago and told them that he had reduced taxes on fuel. Must the president lie? What the hell, man? What the hell is this? Nobody is forcing him. Must he lie? Nyayombe, another Kenyan on X, made a comment saying, the president believes by listening to himself he'll take this country far. He rubbishes all the statistics on the ground. Anyway, he has a plan. Now, that's what some of the Kenyans had to say on X. And I'll also love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, adios. choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.